Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we're going to do a, a tour around the site like a circle. أهلاً بالجميع وإن إحنا راح نتنمشي في تور حوالين المزرعة على طريقة دائرية بنطلع من هون وبنرجع بالليفورة. So we got now it's about 11 years from when we started and it looked like more or less any of the bear blocks around the uh, the, the the road here. In 11 years, we're going to see this this project. And we've got a time lapse that can be run in any time in the cafe, so you can see a 10-year time lapse of how it's all changed. في فيديو في فيديو عارضينه في الكافة اللي بحب يشوفه عش الفيديو بيبين العشر سنين اللي إحنا بنشين فيها لحد هلا. We started with nothing. إحنا بلشنا بلا شيء. Nadia and I purchased the land, and then we created a society and gave the land to the society. نادية وجيف اشتروا هذا هاي الأرض وبعدين بلشوا فيها الأيام البرمجية. But we had no funding. ما كان في تمويل أبداً. So we started really slowly and got funded as we created some success. بلشنا شوي شوي لحد ما إجانا تمويل وبلشنا بنجاح شوي شوي. And then course by course we volunteered and the courses really financed the site starting point. بعد كورس وكورس وكورس بلش يجي عنا مستوعين وبلشنا نكبر ونكبر ونكبر. Then eventually we got some funds from Lush Cosmetics. Lush Cosmetics هي شركة Lush هي بتعمل أيش كله طبيعي. Organic. على بلاد مختلفة زي بلادنا فبيرتج الزيوت من الزيوت وبيعملوا مواد طبيعية للبشرة للوجه. فالمصاري هاي بترجع ل للبلد للناس المحتاجة فهم ساعدونا بأول دعم. Now we make our own cosmetics. لكن بنعمل كريمات ملحمة. But then Muslim Aid Australia started to fund us and we became their champion sustainable project. بعدين Muslim Aid Australia هي مؤسسة إسلامية في أستراليا من أستراليا الموجودين اللوجو موجود على الكافية موجود هون يعني بصراحة من غيرهم إحنا ما صرنا هم اللي ساعدونا وبلشوا معانا من الحمامات من فوق لما نزلنا وظبطنا كل هاي الأمور ساعدونا بالكافية فهم كانوا الداعم الكبير اللي اللي وراء نجاحنا صراحة so um, we, we, we went in the opposite direction to most aid projects. Most aid projects put a lot of money in to start with and they look really good the day they open. And then ten years later, they've sort of gone down to something that doesn't doesn't work much. Ten years ago, this looked terrible. قبل عشر سنين هذا المكان. and had no money at all. من غير فلوس ما كان معنا مصاري صراحة من مرة. and all the locals thought we were crazy. وكل المحليين جيراننا بفكرونا إحنا مجانين. and we probably were. أكيد إحنا كنا مجانين. and nobody was interested. فما كانش في حدا يعني متشجع أو مش متشجع لأنه. because it didn't look very attractive and it was very hard work. لأنه شغل كان كتير صعب وكان بالنسبة لهم إشي مش يعني إشي مش معال نعمله هون خصوصاً إحنا بصحراء. The the things what we did Jeff and I we we actually the first thing we did we don't want to build any any walls. We made sure the walls is actually is open and people when drive past and walk past they actually could see what we're doing because we want them to be curious. We don't want to tell them what we're doing and why you come and have a look. No, we just done our things. And we just let them they stop and they come and ask us what are you doing? And then we tell them what we're doing and that will become an interest. Uh, but uh, after a few years then we build our wall because now it's need to be is now is now in and now be more secure. Every year more people came. 
زوار بكثروا مو فورنرز وخصوصا المش المحليين اللي من برا البلد as we got results we got a little bit more funding every year بالتالي صار في عندنا نتائج اكثر كل ما كان في نتائج اكثر وكل ما كان في تمويل اكثر after five years people locally started to get interested we were obviously getting bigger بعد خمس سنين بلشوا الناس المحليين يتشجعوا لهذا الشيء وصلنا نكبر Every year we got more people, every year we got more funding. So last year we opened, after 10 years. It was our opening. Opening day was last year, this time last year. And we even had some aid organizations criticize us for doing too good a job. They said you made the cafe look like something that would fit into Paris. <laughs> he made the bedrooms look beautiful upstairs and lots of people want to come and stay with Airbnb. But I argued that why shouldn't we do that for aid? Does, doesn't everybody here deserve what everybody else has? And then we change the world together. So last year was the busiest year. Last year had the most funding and the most people. We just had a course with 60 for two weeks and now we have a practical with 25. السنة اللي فاتت كانت أكثر سنة كنا مشغولين فيها وهي السنة كان عنا كورس كان في تقريبا أكثر من ستين طالب وبهذا الكورس كمان في كورس أربع أسابيع برضو في طلاب تقريبا خمسة وعشرين. Now the Ministry of Agriculture take our courses. برضو اللي من وزارة الزراعة برضو أخذوا معنا كورسات. And um, and uh, and schools and and uh, there's lots of interest now. برضو المدارس كانت متشجعة لهذا لهذا المشروع وفي عنا دورات بالمدارس وإحنا مشتركين مع أكثر من مدرسة بخصوص هذا المشروع وبنمولهم هاي الجهة. Two things in the living system are very important. في شغلتين باللي بالنظام المعيشي عنا كتير مهمين. By design. التصميم. And that's what's got most of the result. وهذا الإشي اللي بعطينا نتائج غير. We built soil. إحنا بلشنا ببناء ببناء التراب عنا. Because we partnered with trees that do this. آه بلشنا ببناء التراب عن طريق إنه إحنا زرعنا نباتات كانت بهذا الحجم. I'm going to show you what happens in a year's time. رح نفرجيكم كيف يعني كيف خلال سنة شو صار بهاي الشجرة. ساعدني محمد. بلش خلاص. Okay I'll translate. Yeah. So this this has just been cut. إحنا بقص جنبنا هاي من فترة قصيرة. And it's regrowing already. وهيها بلشت تنمو مرة ثانية. It's cut at the start of the start of the cooler time of the year. بن بنجنبها بداية موسم البرد. And it'll regrow in quite big by the time it's hot again in March, April. There's been many variations of that where we're feeding the soil. So this terrible soil has changed a lot in 10 years. And we've directed water to soak into the site. It's not a lot of rainfall. Any that falls on the site soaks in. Because of our earthworks, it goes into the ground. ولما تشتي الدنيا بهاي المنطقة المي بتنحفظ بالمكان نفسه تنزل. Some runs off the road. جزء منها يعني بتسرب لبرا. But most of what is used here by people, well all of what is used here by people in kitchens and sinks and 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 showers and toilets stays here. بس المياه هي اللي الناس بتستخدمها بال عند بال بالمطبخ وعند المغسلة. وبالحمامات والشاور هي بتضلها موجودة. So the more people we have, the more water we have. كل ما كان الناس أكثر، كل ما كان في عنا مي أكثر. And we've got more people, so we've got more water. كل ما كان عنا، كل ما أخذنا ناس كتير، كل ما أخذنا كمان مي كتير. Those are the two most valuable parts of the design. في عنا متغيرين أو valuable متغيرين. Everything else is diversity that's come because we've been able to do that. We've been able to introduce lots of different living things because we do that. عشان إحنا ركزنا على التصميم واهتمنا فيه بالنسبة للعاملين التصميم اللي حكينا عنهم قدرنا نزيد التنوع 
اللي موجود So I'm going to remind you of this tree as we get up the back of the site because there's some not cut and I can show you what happens in one year. فراح اذكركم بهاي الشجرة لما نروح على الجهة الثانية من الموقع عشان في بعض هاي الشجر لسه ما قلمناها من سنة. And then we'll show you the water features as we go. وراح نفرجيكم ال خلينا نحكي المواقع المائية اللي موجودة. Okay. Next stop, we're going to have to stop. Walk, stop, walk, stop, walk, stop. To do a tour. Just come as close as you can, but try not to come around the corner. Shout. Shout. Shout down here to the ladies. So these are wicking beds. These are beds that water from underneath. You're going to see a lot of them. هاي أحواض متسميها ويكنج بيدز طبعا طريقة سقاء هاي الأحواض من تحت بتكون راح نفرجيكم بعدين. Over here under the shade class are worm farms that create fertilizer. أو تحت هاي الشريطة هون في خلينا نحكي بسموها مزارع دود. There are tens of thousands of worms in those bars. في عشرات آلاف الدود بهاي الأحواض. And they make solid fertilizer and liquid fertilizer from our waste food. And our trees are here again, starting to grow. The nearest wicking bed, these wicking beds use the least amount of water of any garden. They're the minimum water you can do in the world. هو نوع الزراعة اللي بستهلك أقل كمية مياه. Because the water is coming up from underneath. عشان المي بتطلع من تحت. No evaporation. ما في أي تبخر. But this one on the corner here has a worm farm tower in the big tube. بس في هنا مزرعة دود على شكل اسطواني داخل هذا الحوض. So we can put food scraps in there and the worms are eating it and you water through there and it fertilizes as well. فبنحط بقايا الطعام بهاي الاستوانة الدود بياكلها وبحللها بتحول لسماد وبتسقو من هون فبتطلع السماد لباقي الحوض. This year we put in our first mulch pit banana circle there and we've got a second mulch pit banana circle next to our garden around the corner. طبعا في عندنا حفرتين واحد هون وواحد ورا البناية فيها الملتش اللي هي المواد الكربونية اللي بيحطوها داخل هاي الحوض وهاي من بقايا الموز طبعا. So this sink here, the water from this sink goes straight into the banana circle. The water from the cafe goes straight down there to a reed bed behind the western side of the building. And the toilet here is a compost toilet, like all the toilets on site. Minimum water, only wash water. Next stop. Okay, so quick stop. This is a little reed bed, and those two kitchen sinks go through here. And then it goes from here to the garden. Because these are kitchen sinks, it has a grease trap here. You have to trap the grease before it gets here, otherwise it'll all sticky up. تمام في زي تصفية بتصفي الماء اللي بتيجي من المطبخ الأشياء اللي تجي اللي بتخليها وبتصفي وبتخلي الماء العادية فيها كم من شوائب بس بضلها ماشية عاد. So that's a lot of water that other people are wasting. Okay, next stop. So this is our nursery, obviously, where we propagate a lot of trees and vegetables. Um, and these are all new wicking beds all the way through here. At this time of year, we've taken the shade off, but in summer the shade's over, so we can grow further into the summer. And we're going to build more gardens in the middle, but that's later. <laughs> and and this this 
electric air pump you can hear running. It's pumping air through compost tea. So what Sam's going to pull the sack out and that's those are socks. Jibrat. Jibrat. <laughs> Jibrat. <laughs> and, so, and Sam's going to wear them afterwards. <laughs> and inoculate his feet. <laughs> You'd have to translate that. <laughs> but they're compost and biochar. So in that drum is compost and the organisms are getting blown into the water. And the biochar is not like charcoal. It's past charcoal. It's got no tree oils left, so it's... It, like if I rub my hands with it, I'll go black. But if I put that under a tap, it'll come straight off. So it won't burn again. It's not like charcoal where you can burn it again. It's past that stage. But it's got millions of little holes in it. So these become... This is where the organisms in here can move in and be... and have like a house. But it's all crushed like that. It's all fine. So when you when you you charge the compost tea into the biochar, you have very stable organisms in the soil. They're very they're they're very safe. So the compost tea is good, and this actually creates sort of a houses for all the little organisms to live in, in the soil. So with a, a small amount of compost like that, we could fertilize most of the site. But you can't, it has to have oxygen in the water. They can't live if it's not got oxygen in the water. So if you switch it off, you only got about six hours to use it. Otherwise, it won't be any good. So I'm just going to watch. I just... Sorry. There you go. Just a quick wash. It's gone. There's no tree oils. It's not sticky. That's the difference between charcoal and biochar. Okay, next stop. I'm going in, right, and you're going along. Okay. Uh, or probably. No, you just keep going along. I'm going in. Okay. You keep going along. Move up a little bit and then you get more room because you just go all the way along the fence. I can walk up and down in here. Okay, so this is the the, the engine of fertility on site. So this makes more more fertilizer than any other element. And it produces eggs. And some chicken meat. So every week, mulch is taken from under the roost where they've been dropping manure. Yeah, from under where they sleep, uh, under here, 
This this hashish here, this mulch, <laughs> yeah, is taken over here, and that's replaced. كل المالش اللي هناك يكون الفضلات الدجاج عليه بنجي بنجمع هون نعمل كومة هذي. It has to be a third of a cubic meter at least. تقريباً ثلث متر مكعب تقريباً. Then a third of a cubic meter of 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 sheep and goat manure. بنحط له كمان ثلث من زبل الغنم أو الماعز. And a third of a cubic meter of food scraps. وثلث من بقايا ال المطبخ يعني الطعام والخلفات المطبخ. The chickens then scratch it all apart. After one week, we put it back together here. They're not quite as interested, but nearly as interested in this pile, so they scratch that apart. We make a new pile. We move that one down and this one down. Now, now, now we're three weeks. They, they, they're quite interested in this one. You can see where they're scratching. And they were tidied up this morning, by the way. <laughs> then, then we move it down here. That's week one, week two, week three, week four. Then we go down here. Then what? Then it leaves and goes to the garden as fertilizer. So, if you make a new pile every week. And you have all the piles working. You have one cubic meter coming out this door every week. That's 53 cubic, 52 cubic meters a year. 50 cubic meters, let's say, on 3,000 square meters of land. If you take off, if you take off the buildings, it's only two thousand square meters, two dunam. That's twenty-five cubic meters of dunam. That's two cubic meters. That's two cubic meters a week hitting a dunam. You're going to change the soil fertility. Uh, no question. No question. Here we also have rabbits at the top, um, and the next house is rabbits, so we bring some rabbit manure into the into this as well. And if we want to, we can take temperatures. So we, we want the temperature to stay between 65, uh, 55 and 65 at the beginning and get cooler as it goes down. And we add a little bit of water, especially in summer, but keep it shaded, quite shaded. Okay, just come up this way. Just keep coming up this way. That's the rabbit door there. This is a water harvesting swale. Where I'm stood in a water harvesting system. It goes all the way to the road. This is the longest one on the property. And it starts at the lowest point on the highest boundary. Okay. 
هذا اعلى اعلى حد لنا بناخذ اخفض نقطه ومنها بنبلش هذا اطول سويل عندنا سويل هو عباره عن منطقه بنجمع فيها المي So this will all be up to here in water from here all the way to the road and all soak into the site وكل المي ممكن يصل مستواها زي ما حدد من هاد من هون لهناك لانهم كلياتهم نفس الليفل نفس المستوى So there's three of these on site عندنا ثلاث سويلات في في الموقع So I don't let any water run off the site وما في اي مي بتروح هيك ولا هيك بهذا الموقع Whether it's rain or it's irrigation they stop it and get it into the soil سواء كان مطر او سواء كان احنا عمالنا بنعمل ري بيوقف هون بالسويل ومنه بنبلش Now these are the most important large earthwork features for water harvesting What? <laughs> These are the most important earthwork features. And and it's it's easy to just not realize what it is. We actually need to install these all the way from here to our man. We need to install these all the way to Iraq. <laughs> and all the way to Aqaba. Okay. Uh, and all the way to Syria. Um, no. No, it's, no, it is what you see. Okay. It's a swell. It's a water harvesting swell. It's an ancient system. Nabataeans were pretty good at it, right? We can do it with bulldozers, laser levels, satellite level. We can do it real high tech. I'm just about to put a load through Saudi, right, with big machines, you know, not a problem. You could rehydrate Jordan. Jordan could be oversupplied with water instead of undersupplied if you did the right thing. Wouldn't be that expensive. This is just a very small version. <laughs> okay, this way. Coming through. Just come round, all around, come round, keep coming. We can crowd in a little bit. It's all getting a bit forested up here. This used to be really infertile, this area. This was the worst part of the site. Keep coming. This is a really important part to understand. Keep coming, come on through. You're right, you can, I don't bite, you can come closer. Okay. Yeah, come on. Are you there? Oh, sorry. I got the cameraman. All this has grown in a year. The, the tree I showed you at the beginning is the same tree. These are the last ones here that the interns are going to cut this week. All that is going to feed the soil. This, this tree is as good as a, as a feed as, as lucerne, alfalfa. But we're feeding the soil. And the roots have nitrogen fertilizer. The roots have nitrogen fertilizer. So, so when we cut, we get all of this back in a year's time. And this tree is very friendly. Doesn't have any spikes. But the site was so poor, we couldn't start with this one very well. 
the site was so poor originally, we needed prosopus, we needed spiky trees to start with. Ah, but this is something for the plants that have it with it so all the around you, all the way around the site, and there's some hanging over the fence, there are prosopus. Because we had to start with a much tougher tree. Stronger. So I would aim this at the fruit trees. But the roots are actually part of the fertilization and they they're in position. But when we when we got more fertility, we wanted to do something with the prosopus. We wanted to still use the prosopus. So we dug these pits underneath here that it goes down two meters below ground. There's another one over there. And there's another one over here. There's three. And we cut the, 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 the trees up and we put them in the hole. And, and under my feet is probably the best soil on the site. And all of a sudden this area which was really infertile increased in tree growth, increased in fertility. So a lot of people don't realize that a forest grows on a fallen forest. What falls onto the ground is what grows the forest. And the soil is alive. And it eats the for it eats the 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 green and it eats the wood. So to feed the fruit trees, you need to bring the soil alive. With natural methods, you don't feed the plants, you feed the soil. And it's the life in the soil that feeds the plants and the fruit trees. When you eat food, your body doesn't eat the food. The, ant, the, the little organisms in your gut eat the food and they feed you. So in the soil, the bacteria eat the green material. And the fungi eat the wood. So you can say that the soil is an animal. That's all mouth. And the fungi are the teeth they eat the wood to grow the forest and if you if you don't understand that or you're not used to it it's really difficult to understand what we're doing so this 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 problem we had with spiky mulch the spikes on the mulch of the prosopus, the problem we had. 
من 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 شجبت الأشوكيات الموجودة عندي. Turned into one of the best solutions we've ever come up with. <laughs> Turned into one of the best answers, one of the best solutions we've ever come up with. So this is all organic matter under my feet. We put some manure with it. We aim water into it. And all this decomposition is like rainforest soil underneath. تمام اللي تحت رجله هذا المنش احنا بنحط عليه مي وهو اللي بيغذي كل الغبي. We had trouble growing citrus because it needs acid soil. We've had trouble growing limons and Portugal and mandarin, all the citrus, but now they're growing with this interaction. So in, in really poor desert soils, citrus are a good indicator. Because the desert's naturally alkaline and the citrus like little bit of acid. So once you've got your citrus producing, you're doing something right. تمام ليش ممكن تكون دليل لانه احنا عندنا احنا منطقه صحراويه دائما التراب فيها بيكون قاعدي فالحمضي سوري الحمضيات هي بحاجه ل لاسيد لوسط حامض يعيش فيه بالتالي نموه وخصوصه هي اللي بتعب اعطيني دليل على نوعيه التربه اوكي اوكي فولو مي وي غونا دو ا ليتل بيت اوف ا سيركل ليتل سيركل هير اند سي ذا ريد بيد So this is probably one of the most important water saving systems for a house. هذا ال هذا الأحوض كتير إشي مهم بالحفاظ على المياه بيوتنا وبال بالمزرعة هون. These plants clean the water from the showers and sinks. هاي النباتات بتعمل فلترة أو تنظيف للماء اللي بتيجي من المياه الشور ومياه المغاسل. Let's switch her on. So we can we can water about 15 fruit trees. That water looks quite clean. If you look here, you can see the water coming out. ممكن إلا إذا حدا جاي يشوف هنا بتلاقوا الماء نفتحها بالحنفية بتطلع لي الماء اللي موجودة فيها وهي ماء نظيفة ممكن إحنا this this handled 60 people on site using the showers for two weeks. في خلال الأسبوعين بشهر 11 كان في عنا 60 طالب تقريبا أكثر من 60 طالب كان يستخدموا هذول الشوارات في الماء راح تكون كتير موجودة. Bit dirty at that end. So if if you if if one by one you just come and look at the water, there's a lot of clean water we can we can use here. ممكن تجوا واحد واحد وتشوف الماء لأنها كتير نظيفة اللي هاب. That all the water we normally waste could go to gardens and growing food. نستطيع استخدام كل المياه ال ال الرمادية اللي في الشوارات المغاسل لسقاية أشجارنا وبالتالي الحديقة وبالتالي الحصول على ثمار. And some villages in the in 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 the mountains are now doing this. وفي برضو الكثير من الكثير من القرى اللي موجودين بالجبال بتعمل هذا السيستم. Uh, and they're growing olives when other people can't grow olives in bad years and things like that because they've got extra water from grey water. برضو ممكن هم يزرعوا زيتون ولأنهم بيستخدموا الكثير من الماء اللي بتيجي من هذا هاي الأحوال. Where I live in Australia, it's illegal not to do this. هو بعيش بأستراليا عندهم ممنوع يعملوا هيك إشي. لا لازم لا لا. Legal. 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 قانوني آه قانوني إنهم يعملوا هيك إشي. You have to do this. Ah, you have to do. لازم تعملوا هيك إشي. إجباري. Yeah. So, and when you talk to Islamic scholars. Because it's just natural plants, they say that it's not najas. The water is not najas. عشان هم بيتعاملوا مع منظمة إسلامية وعرفوا إنه هاي عبارة عن تراء عن نباتات مش مش نجسة يعني عادي. فالماء راح تكون طاهرة ما ينظيف ممكن نستخدمها. Okay, we'll leave it running so you can have a look. إذا خليناها فاتحة راح نأخذ كثير من.
Come on up. We're going to look at toilets. Well, we're not going to look at them. We're going to talk about them. Um, these are our, our, our showers and toilets. The reason they're up here is that we didn't want to use a pump to get the water to the reed bed and then run it downhill. So it's up here because we want the water to go down. We didn't want to use any extra electricity. Because our electricity is solar. There's no bees in here. <laughs> but this is a beehive. And it has a really unusual system. I can take these out. I can take these out. Okay. I can put that in. Right, so let me set this up properly. It would look like that. I can put this in. Take that out. And I can twist this like that. Without any bees. Without touching any bees, honey comes straight out of there. Uh -huh. So I could have a, I could have a, 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 a jar sitting here. So when I do that, I change the internal frame. So what happens is these combs separate and the honey just flows straight out. Right, so this is a, a new system. Being made of plastic, like somebody said, versus wax, does this affect any of the quality of I have this question because I saw that I, I was wondering. It's silica. Silica. This is silica and there's bits of plastic, but doesn't seem, it seems to make them very happy. Oh. So, there are windows you can see in as well, so you can see the bees and you can open like this and you can see the bees working. The bottom underneath is a normal hive. That's a normal hive where the, where the brood is, where the babies are. The queen and the babies are in the bottom. Now here you have a normal hive. 
هاي خلية عادية هاي خلية عادية But also, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm taking a tray out of the bottom. You just put a bit of olive oil in here. And it's a trap for any of the beetles or mites or ants that might damage the bees. So it's all set up with a level on the side and a level on the back, so you you adjust the legs so everything works perfectly. So imagine that you, you just want some honey, you don't want to take all the bees and get apart and get stung. You just come out, you turn a key and honey comes straight out. This was a sponsorship to show people in Jordan. This is? This was a donation. And this was invented in the village that we that we live in in Australia. This is a, a, an invention from my village. <laughs> now we're going to go to the bottom bottom kitchen. We have another thing coming called a subpod worm farm. It should be here this week. We're going to have to just look in the corner. So look in there and then look round the back of the door. In there, there's the inverter. The blue thing is the inverter. Okay, so this is the last last section. I'm just going to explain the electricity or try to. Just for you, right? We have copper, indium, gallium, selenium panels on the roof. On that high roof are the solar panels. There's shell shower. You know shell shower? Yeah. And in here we have batteries. But these are nickel iron batteries. Nickel iron. They will last up to a hundred years. They will last a hundred years. And in behind the door, you can't see it from here, you've got to go in and look back. There's a Dutch inverter. It's a it's a it's a it's a company called Victron. Victron, okay. Uh so it takes the electricity and brings it up to mains power. It, it makes the electricity clean and smooth so it doesn't doesn't damage any appliances. But if you plug the mains in, if you click the mains, it becomes a battery charger. If you if you put the mains electricity on, but we use a switch. If you put the mains electricity on, the same machine charges the batteries. So if you have a cloudy day, which is not common in Jordan, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a kathir hafla. Hafla kathir. A big party, right? You might need the extra power. Especially if the party is at night. But this, this 
If you start a generator and put it into the system, it immediately goes from being an inverter to a charger. It, it switches automatically. In other words, if you put power in from somewhere else, it becomes a charger. And it's on your app. I, I have an app and on the phone. Ah, an application. So I can watch the project's electricity from Australia or anywhere in the world. In fact, I could switch the electricity off on my phone from anywhere in the world. Or I could switch the mains power on the app on my phone anywhere in the world. So it doesn't matter if you're not home, you can watch if you've got an electricity problem. You know if the children are at home having a big party. <laughs> and you can switch electricity off on them. <laughs> the building is a standard concrete form with the with the with the concrete pillars. Because people trust that. But the walls are straw bale. Downstairs on the on the west side. Uh, on the on the Maghreb side. Uh, and the south side. On this side and on the on the north side they're mud brick. And downstairs all the internal walls are mud brick. Upstairs, it's all straw bale. Why did we do that? Because the 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 the, the mud brick on the east side and the north side hold the cold. They've got thermal mass, so they they store the cold. And the internal walls are shady too, downstairs, and they hold the cold. They work like a, a kind of air conditioner in summer. The western wall has got very few windows and it, and it insulates against the afternoon hot sun. The, the, the western wall is all straw bale and very few windows. Because the windows let the heat in and the afternoon sun is the worst sun. That's hard to do here because people want to look at Palestine. And, and, and the south side, which is the sunny side, is also all straw bale because it insulates really well against the sun. This time of year there's more sun, but it's not so hot. The sun's lower, but it's cooler. But we also, this is the time of year, we cut all the support trees and let the sun through a bit.
عشان يا عشان الشمس تزيد لانه احنا هسه حاليا الشمس راح تزيد لانه احنا فصل الشتاء. In the hot summer, this site's much shadier. في الش في الصيف احنا بنحافظ على الظل بهاي المزرعة. Because all those trees have grown big, long, leafy branches. عشان هيك بنخلي الأشجار تنمو زي ما هي وتزيد بالطول وبال بالظل لأن احنا بحاجة للظل. There's another garden on the roof. There's a wicking bed garden on the roof too. And we're just going to redo that to something really fancy. We're going to make it very fancy on the roof. Montaz. Montaz. شكل ممتاز لل للسطح. With nice, nice grills and nice tiles, and make it like another extension of the cafe. Like this garden, you'll be able to sit upstairs and have a cafe, have a coffee, semi shade, look at Palestine, look at the Dead Sea, be surrounded by food. That's this year's project. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Yeah.